This is the first section, chapter six, further hypothesis tests. And in this section, we're gonna be looking at the variance of a normal distribution. So what we're gonna be doing in this section is we'll be calculating a confidence interval for the population variance or the population standard deviation based on a sample. Now it's important to note at this point that our sample must be taken from a population which is normally distributed. Now, it can be shown that if we do n minus one, so that's our sample size minus one, times by our sample variance and divide that by our population variance, then it's a chi-square distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. So that's the sample size minus one and that gives us a degree of freedom of this chi-square distribution, which is what this calculation would give us, a chi-square distribution. So if we uh, rearrange the formula, we can get our confidence limits as n minus one times by, I'm use little s here because we'll actually work out our sample variance. Um, so n minus one times by our sample variance divided by, um, a chi-square distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. Now this value here of um, alpha over two, it's basically the area that we're gonna have in the tails, or basically the area from the left up to the tails, depending on the confidence interval. Now I've used a proper notation, but let's say for example, we had a 90% confidence interval. So this would be 90% in a minute in the middle, sorry, and the tails will be 5% each. So alpha over two, that will just be 5% here. And then this tail here would be 95%. So we, we can work them out easily. So for example, if it was again, like a 95% confident interval, you know, you've got two and a half percent in the tails. So the um, values would be here, 2.5 because we'll have 2.5 basically in each of the tiles 2.5 here and 97.5 here so it's useful actually just to draw a diagram and then you can see what the areas are on each side and that will give us these values and then if we just take these numbers here we can work out a confidence interval and a confidence interval we just need to put in square or sort of normal rounded brackets and the two values separated by a comma will then give us the confidence interval. Example one, in order to determine the accuracy of a new rifle, eight marksmen were selected. So let's just underline the eight. There's my sample size there. Eight marksmen were selected at random to fire the tar uh, rifle at target. The distances X in millimeters of the eight shots from the center of the target were as follows. So we've got 10, 14, 12, 8, 6, 11, 18, and four. Assuming the distances are normally distributed, find a 95% confidence interval for the variance. Okay, so I'm starting by drawing my chi-squared distribution. Uh, I've got a 95% confidence interval, so I need to work out what these values are here to get my confidence interval. And because it's 95%, um, I've got an area of 2.5 in each tail, this is 2.5. But we know that when we put it in the chi-square distribution for this value, I'll put in 97.5. So the next thing I would do is to work out the sample variance. So I'd use my calculator to do this. It's going to be quick and easy. If you're using the class with FX991EX, it's menu six, one, you type in your data, option three, and it gives me the sample variance as 14.2678, it goes on. If you're using the CG50, it's menu two, you type in the data, and it's F2 and F1. Now the CG50 doesn't give you the sample variance, it only gives you the sample standard deviation. So in our calculation, we're gonna to have to square this uh, when we use it. So just a reminder now of the formula that we use um, to find the confidence intervals. Um, now to find the lower and upper confidence intervals, we'll do the alpha over two 
uh, 2.5 and then we'll do um, 1 minus alpha over 2 so we'll be putting 97.5 in here. Now we know that uh, n is 8 so I'm not sure why I'll put n minus 8. Um, so n is 8. Oh, I did write the right thing. Okay, uh, so now we work out n minus uh, 1, so that's going to be 7, times by our sample variance. So I'm going to use the 14.2678. I'll probably try and use the answer button there. Divided by, and I'm going to have my chi squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, 7. And this is going to be 2.5 here. Now, uh, we can either use the percentage points table to find this value, or we can use our CG50 to do that. Uh, and remember, what you'll need to do is to go to uh, distribution, uh, chi, or chi, C-H-I, and you want inverse C, because we know the area, we want to find um, sort of the value on the chi-squared distribution. Um, and if I do that with seven degrees of freedom from the CG50, I get a value of 16.01276 and so on. Okay. Um, from the percentage points table, you'll get 16.013. It's going to round to the same thing. Right, now I realised actually I'd only wrote, written down this, I actually need to do the whole calculation. So using the values I, I get here, to three decimal places, I get 6.237. Okay, three decimal places should be sufficient. So now I'm going to do the same thing to find the upper limit for my uh, confidence interval. So. It's going to be the same calculation, 14.2678, uh, divided by, so the only thing that now changes is that 2.5 now becomes 97.5. So I'll need to work that out. Again, I'm going to use the CG50 to work out what that value is. And that gives me 1.6898, and again it carries on, and I'll use those figures to work out um, the value for the upper limit. So that gives me 59.104. Now, um, obviously, if you use the percentage points tables, you're going to get slightly different values, but the mark schemes will allow for um, a certain range of values. So um, I want to give it as a confidence interval. So it's going to be 6.237 and 59.104. So let's just highlight that as our final answer. And then we'll move on to next question. Example two, a company manufactures 12 amp electrical fuses. A random sample of 10 fuses, okay, so there's our value of N, was taken from a batch and the failure current X measured for each. The results are summarized as follows. So we've been given these summary statistics. Sum of X is 118.9, sum of X squared, um, uh, 1414.89, so I'll just put here N is 10. Assume that the data can be regarded as a random sample from a normal population. And what we need to do in part A is calculate an unbiased estimate for the variance of the batch based upon the sample. Right, okay, so uh, just a reminder of how we find an unbiased estimate. So it's 1 over n minus 1 times by the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared, all squared, over n. Now, the reason we need to calculate an unbiased estimate for the variance is because we don't have the data, we just have these summary statistics. And any question where you're given the summary statistics, 
you need to calculate an unbiased estimate for the variance. This question tells us to do that, but you may come across questions where you're just given these values like sum of x, sum of x squared. Um, you will automatically need to calculate that unbiased estimate, even if it doesn't ask you to um, do so. So let's now put the numbers in and work them out. So it's 1 over n minus 1, so 10 minus 1, so 1 over 9. Sum of x squared, 118.9, minus the sum of x. Um, oh, let's do that right. So the sum of x squared, sorry, so that should be 1414.89 minus 118.9 and that's squared divided by n so not n minus 1 so divided by n let's stick this on the calculate and see what we get and that gives me exactly 1169 over 9000 okay i think as a decimal it's 0.1298888 so on um, so, but we'll leave it as, as that exact um, fraction. Okay, part B, it says use your estimate uh, from part A to calculate a 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation. Okay, so not the variance, but for the standard deviation. Okay, so uh, just a reminder about the formula that we need to use to find our confidence limits, which we can use for the confidence interval. And just like a little diagram here, um, you, you can probably do this type of thing automatically. You see 95% and you know 2.5%, and then this will be the 97.5. It's all automatic, but maybe the diagram just helps. And like if it's 90%, then it's going to be 595. So those things normally come automatically, I think. But yeah, the diagram's just there if you need it. Right, so let's put the numbers in and work it out. Start with a lower limit. So uh, n minus 1, 9 times by our unbiased estimator for the um, variance. So 1169 divided by 9000. And that's going to be divided by a chi-squared distribution with 9 degrees of freedom. And this is going to be 2.5, 2.5%. Now this time, I'm going to use the percentage points table rather than the CG50. So the top become, I realise I've missed a zero out there, will become 1169 over 1000 once we times it by 9 divided by 19.023 so this is for the percentage points table i guess really rather than write 2.5 here i should write 2.5 percent to avoid any conclude uh, confusion when i did it before and i put 2.5 and 95 uh, 97.5 that meant percentage so i'll put the percentage symbol in just to avoid any confusion so that does give me the exact value, 1169 over 19023. Um, I guess I really want it as a, a decimal, um, as I'm going to put it in my confidence interval. So 0 0.06145, so let's call it 615. So this is going to be correct to 4dp. Um, 3dp yeah, it should be fine as well but um, since there's a leading zero there I thought I'd just add the extra decimal but I wouldn't do any less than three decimal places and upper limit so it's going to be similar calculation so 9 times 1169 over 9000 then divided by my chi-squared distribution and I missed out all the little squared symbols as well. So I'll put those in chi squared, nine degrees of freedom. And we're looking for 97.5%. So that will again be 1169 over 1000 divided by, again, using the percentage points table, 
it's a value of 2.700. Let's work that out and see what we get. And this also gives me an exact value of 1169 over 2700. So again, we really want that as a, a decimal. So 0 0.4 three two now it goes nine six so if i'm going to round that to four dp it'll be four point three three zero four dp okay so these two values here are not my final answer because that is a confidence interval for the variance I want a confidence interval for the standard deviation. So I simply just square root these answers and I probably want to square root the exact values. So I'm gonna square root the exact values that I have here. So square rooting this 1169 over 19023 gives me a lower value of 0.2 four seven eight nine four nine nine one so let's give this to four decimal places so 0 0.2479 and again we'll work out the exact value of the other square root 1169 over 2700 and that gives us 0 0.2479 six five and then it's seven and then nine 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 so let's call it um eight zero so uh, six five eight zero okay so there's our confidence interval for our standard deviation so if you get a question that asks for a confidence interval for standard deviation you do the same working as you would do to find a confidence interval for the variance then you take your two variance answers and you just square root them okay so that's going to be the only difference uh, so you square root right at the very end so you should now be able to do exercise 6a uh, from pages 145 to 146 of the textbook.